Welcome to Tabletop Ready Games Painting Tutorial, where I show you how to get your models on the table with a minimal amount of effort and using basic skills and techniques perfect for beginners. We're going to start getting the airbrush ready. I've got some paints that I've already showed you. We're going to go ahead and get started with the uh, air paint from Citadel, the Nocturne Green. It's really important for using air paints to get the right mixture. We're going to go ahead and make sure they're shaken. Uh, I use a tumbler usually to really get a good mix. I then use a uh, product called a uh, universal acrylic thinner. Usually two or three drops depending on the volume. Uh, then I use a sponge to occlude the end and kind of let it gurgle in the pot. You could use a paintbrush uh, to kind of stir it, spray it on the paper, make sure you get the consistency you want. So what we're doing here is we're going to shade all of the recesses with this nocturne green. We're looking for a transition. Uh, don't have to be neat here. You could do this with a, a brush technique if you wanted to, but you would start with a darker green and then dry brush with a highlight of the lighter green. Uh, we're kind of going in reverse here because with the airbrush, we can hit those recesses. Uh, this gives a little bit of transition. Right now, it, it's very stark, but once we get going with this, you'll see how it really makes these transitions flow. And what you want to do is you want to hit all of the creases, all of the little recesses, um, all the undersides, anywhere where you've got uh, where the light would reflect because you don't want just a flat surface. So now what we're going to do is we're switching to a the Steel Legion Drab from Citadel Air. And this is going to give us our mud rust effect. Uh, you could use an actual like uh, riser rust and dry brush this on. Uh, that works really well. I like the mud look here. I uh, want to really get it into the tracks. We want to make sure we get it all on the bottom of the tank. This is your, your general wear. Um, I didn't say earlier, but this is a Death Guard tank that we're looking at. I mean, this would work good for World War II miniatures as well if you didn't have a specific. Uh, this is Games Workshop uh, 40K uh, Rhino, uh, Chaos Rhino. I'm going with the Death Guard look. Now, on the back of the tank, I like when you're driving and you're on those dusty roads, you kind of see those swirl patterns where you kind of get that dip in the back, but then up more dust on the sides. So I kind of went with that, with this, and then again, we're going to make sure we get both sides fully covered with the the mud and the, like I said, it's, it's kind of a mud cake, but we can use it as a, a rust. Later on when we do a, a wash, we're going to kind of mute some of this. You're going to see how that comes and transitions. And again, you don't have to be precise. The airbrush uh, is a great tool for feathering. Uh, you get those transitions without a lot of work. Uh, this is a, a rather inexpensive airbrush. I think this one cost me about $60. Um, it's a IO. I think it's called IO. Uh, I use a regular compressor with this dialed down to about 15 to 20 PSI. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put some chipping effects on. So I'm going to grab a piece of the uh, the foam that you get from like the miniature movement or uh, carry trays, uh, or when you you know when you pull out the extra pieces, I always save those. Uh, it was actually pretty tough to pull apart, but uh, finally got it. You're going to dab it in the iron, and then you're going to dab off most of it on a piece of paper, like a flat piece of paper to get the consistency you want. And then you're just going to go crazy. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to this. Any raised area, and again, you could do a little bit, like say um, you had a, a newer, prettier tank, uh, Space Marine, Rhino, and they, they had some battle damage on one side, and they scraped up a side, or the front is get, seeing more action. You could do more on the front. 
eye vision that the Death Guard have had this tank in service for a millennia or so, and it has seen some a lot of work and very little maintenance. Uh, Chaos, the demons' uh, maintenance probably isn't on their high on their to-do list, especially for Narval. I wouldn't want to smell the inside of this thing. But I sped this up a little bit, and again, like I said, every raised area, you could do some blotches if you wanted on the top. I just kind of hit any areas that I thought would see chipping, uh, wear, go around, especially on the corners. Both sides. Again, you can see that this is a super simple technique. It really starts to blend in with those transition of colors. Bring that up. And just super simple, easy. And then it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to transition from here once we get. A pretty satisfied look of our wear. Then we're going to go to the second color as kind of a highlight color and this we're going to use the gunmetal from Army Painter. Same thing we're going to dab off most. You can even use the same sponge. You don't have to switch it out. And then hit not every area but just the raised areas where again where the most is so think of it you've got like rusting and paint chipping and now you've gone through the primer level of the of the paint into the actual metal of the tank and that's what you're seeing with the the gun metal raise up that little flap sorry you can't see that off camera but then this gives you a really nice transition. Just those wear edges. I went ahead and brushed the tracks as well. You've got that mud caked into the tracks, but now you can get some of that uh, metal showing through. Super simple. Almost, this is acting like a dry brush. All right, and there we go. So that step is over, and that took maybe about five minutes. I've sped the video up a little bit in certain places so that you don't have to, but you get the idea. Now we're going to do a wash. Now I like oil paints for this. I use a burnt umber, about two parts, and then about one part of the green, uh, soil green. Uh, put that in the little dish there, mix it with mineral spirits, kind of to a desired consistency. I think probably four or five parts, but you want to get it nice. You see how it's opaque on the side of the edges? Uh, there was a little bit of dried from previous. You, you can see that this doesn't dry out immediately. I think I had painted another vehicle and left it in the thing. And then just go go to town. There's... You don't have, we're not hitting, uh, oh, we're certain cracks or whatever. We're going to cover the entire tank. Now, I did try to avoid directly painting it onto the tracks because I wanted the tracks to show as a dried uh, dirt or mud on the tracks. Uh, but you can see that now with this, we're blending in all of those shades. So you've got the browns and that dark green and the light green. and we're just going to blend all that together. And, and you're asking yourself, well, I saw transitions and now you've, you've just muddied the whole thing. And what did you do? But this is a, this is a transition step. So bear with us for a few minutes and you can see this is in real time and not very long at all. as it's taken me. Now I, I usually wear gloves with this, but I forgot. And then, as usual, the bottom of the tank is, uh, you can go ahead and paint the bottom of your tank. I, I, I don't see any need for it, typically. 
I mean, if you have the new Robo Dorn, it doesn't even have a bottom. So that's how much GW figured the bottom of the tank was worth. All right. So then we're going to take these makeup sponges, and they're super cheap. And now this is where the magic starts to happen. As I brush away from the flat surfaces, these makeup sponges will absorb a lot of this, but it's going to leave a lot in the crevices. So it's going to let all of those little um, cracks and crannies really pop. You can see now you've got your transitions back. You can see the green. You can see the metal chipping. Just going to wipe down. Again, you'll start to see the, that brown pop through again. It does look a little bit more like rust right now, but again, because we didn't do it on the tracks, then the tracks tend to look more like mud, and the side looks just like that dirt and wear. Jump ahead a little bit. As your sponge gets soaked, just get, you know, use the other part of the sponge. All right, and there you go. At this point, you would want to let this dry overnight. All right, now we're going to move on to some detail work. I'm going to go ahead and use the Weapon Browns from our Weapon Bronze from Army Painter. And I'm just dabbing on here. You're going to see I sped this up so it's a little quicker, but and you do not have to be super precise with this because we are going to hit this again with another wash and that's going to cover a lot of that and having the green underneath on the bronze doesn't hurt it because you're going to see um, the green actually shows as like a patina and we're going to activate the patina a little bit with uh, the nylac green or the nylac oxide but leaving a little bit of the death guard green underneath nobody's going to see it so you don't have to be super precise just try not to overpaint I, I like the, the green and the bronze with my Death Guard. I, uh, my, my cloth, if there's any cloth on mine, I usually go with uh, the Alien Purple from Army Painter. I, uh, I really like the green and the bronze and the purple effects, um, kind of that traditional Death Guard in my opinion. So we're going to hit, now I didn't do the, the base of these because I, I, I like the idea of uh, the transitioning metal, you know, that they painted the, the bronze on the bottom. We're going to use skeleton bone here for all of our little skulls. You could do these in, in the bronze as well uh, if you wanted. Uh, I like the transition of thinking that they actually put skulls on the rhinos. I don't know how often they have to replace these, but I'm sure they have plenty of supply. And again, you don't have to be super precise here. You can see this is real time. Just knocking these out, just being careful not to overpaint. I mean, I try to stick with techniques that I think every painter can do. Um, it does take a little practice for a steady hand. Uh, I use, sometimes if I'm doing real fine detail work, I use uh, one of those lights with the magnifying glass. I find that really helps when I'm doing detailed miniatures. Even if you're like, oh, my eyes are great. It is just such an easy thing to blow up that image in front of you. But when working with the large tanks here, it usually is pretty straightforward. I went ahead and just popped the paint on the little skulls. Again, not too much detail, just we're not we're not going for golden demon here. We're just going for a nice good looking tank.
I think it's unrealistic. Uh, Golden Demon, I mean, I kudos to the people who paint at that level, but I, I like getting a painted army on the table. Um, shows that you care. Um, hobbying or painting is uh, the older I get, the more I think that that's every bit as important as gameplay. Um, not to say that your models have to look amazing on the table, but there's pride in that. And um, you're going to start off and you're going to be like, okay, I think this looks good. And then a, a year later, you're going to come back and you're going to be like, man, I can't believe I painted that. And you're going to revisit that model and you're going to paint it and you're going to add some highlights and you're going to add some depth to it. And you're going to be like, you know, things that you learn. Just keep at it. I would not consider myself the best painter. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, uh, take little tips and tricks and uh, things that I like, kind of blend it, try it out. If that didn't work, and I won't do that. Here I'm adding that Nihilac Oxide. And what we're going to do is put this on all of the metal. Again, you can leave some of the metal showing through. And this is going to dry, kind of opaque, so you get that nice patina. This is an old tank. Again, they're not out polishing this bronze. They're out fighting. They're not worried about the bronze. We'll leave that for the, uh, the ultramarines to polish all their brass. These guys are, it's just function. You can see, I mean, I did speed this up, but you can see I'm not putting a lot of effort here. I'm not, I'm just being precise, so I'm not over, over washing or uh, over painting, but I'm not making sure that every link is exactly saturated. You do, if you, I would recommend though, you know, the patina will run down. So the bottoms uh, where the, where the weathering would be most affected is going to be like where you see that chain hanging down on the spear point. So I've got a little bit more green or more oxide there. I think you do the same thing here with the the cow catcher or marine killer or whatever we got on the front of this thing, my ram. I went ahead and put more on the bottom. There you go. You can see I just kind of touch up a little bit extra. All right. You're going to let that dry. We're going to come back to it. So now we're going to make everything blend together. But before we do that, I like the the stacks kind of were flat. And I like the idea that there'd be actually a hole in the stack. So I went ahead and pre-drilled these with the X-Acto knife. Then I wanted to make sure I got the right size bit. And then just nice and easy, I didn't drill all the way through, just made a little hole down uh, almost like an indentation, maybe a couple millimeters, just to get a little hole there. And then what I did later is we came back through with the um, game color, uh, smoky ink, and I hit those stacks with that, make it like there's oil and grime flowing out. So here we're using the my favorite, the Agrax Earthshade. Uh, shade by Citadel. We're going to go over all the chains. So we did the Nihilac Oxide. Now we're hitting those skulls. So go ahead and cover all of it because the idea is, yeah, the patina and everything, but this thing's been through battle. They're not washing this tank. It's grimy. So your Agric Earth Shade is a great way to bring out um, depth and detail. And then there you go. That's our finished product, ready for the battlefield.